Hello, hello, hello. Today for me is Friday, March 8, 2024, early in the morning. Here follows Eugen's solution to problem 194. It's the problem with the two parallel chart rings. I already posted East Corman's video yesterday. He has a video recording. There were three more correct solutions. And here are the three names. Karolsch, Greenman, and Michael Bruning. There were a few solutions which had the first two questions correct, but not the third. In some cases, it could have been a slip of the pen, but we had no way of knowing. I say we, because Keith, Oregon, and I are in contact with each other, and we all three read the solutions. <laughs> and then in unison we decide which are wrong and which are not wrong. So here's organ solution. A ring with radius R and a uniformly distributed charge Q has a z-axis passing perpendicularly through its center at an arbitrary distance plus z from the center of the ring, an infinitesimally small piece of the ring with charge dq will produce a field de. The distance from this small piece dq to the chosen point z is given by the following equation. Pythagoras, right? Simple. If we decompose DE in two components, one in the direction of the radius of the ring and one in the plus C direction, we can conclude that due to symmetry, the net radial components will cancel, thus only remains the force in the Z direction, in this case DEZ. DEZ is DE times the cosine of alpha. And now Oregon tells you what <laughs> the cosine of alpha is, but you can figure that out for yourself, making a little triangle. And then he takes the derivative of this because he wants to know what DEC is. And then he finds that the DEZ is K, I will not read it, you read it, K is Coulomb's constant. If we integrate over the entire ring, we get EZ is that, very simple. But that was one ring, and we have two. So Oregon continues, now that we have a general formula for the value of the E-field along a line that goes perpendicularly through the center of a ring of radius R that has a charge Q uniformly distributed, we can evaluate the values given in the problem. Our problem has two rings each carrying a charge minus Q. Taking into account, taking into consideration that one ring has a plus L over 2 offset from the center and the other one a minus L over 2 offset, you get the following. So he substitutes those values and then he says, 
that equation can be generalized to this function. So notice that this function now has L's over 2 in it. So he massages this equation. He says a nicer version of this equation is He and I even argued for a while whether we should put this new equation, the nicer one, in, but we agreed that we would. And now he's done. This now is the final equation, and all you have to do is now substitute in that equation, first answer, x equals l, Second answer, x equals 2l. And the third answer, x equals minus 1.5l. And he wrote me yesterday by email that this answer can actually still be reduced to this one. And so I, of course, added that too. The sine of EX depends on the direction of the E-field. Does a negative value means the E-field points towards the left of the axis and a positive value means the E-field points towards the right? Notice here is a negative. Notice here is a negative. So those E-fields are to the left. And notice here is a positive, it's to the right. So now you have seen two solutions, the very nice video solution by Keith, and here is also now Eugen's solution. Was this problem too difficult? Depends on your definition. I have 1.6 million subscribers. And the total number of correct solutions was only five. Yet, if you had done your homework and watched some of my eight or two lectures, many of you could have done it. But it's a bit of work. I agree. I will post problem 195, which is an easy one very easy one. I will post that about five or six days from now. If you cannot do this problem, well, there's not much more I can do for you. Other than that, you may have to brush up on your very basic physics. I believe this was once a JEE advanced problem, but I don't remember for sure. What I do remember for sure is that we will always be friends. That's always a given, no matter what.